Hello, I'm Kurt Lidke, board chair of Klamath Film, and you just watched A Man Alone, a wonderful comedy with a very big twist at the end uh, that we will get into. And uh, joining us is both the director and the producer. We're kind of getting the band back together for, for this one. Alyssa Rorenbeck and Christine Kaplan, thank you both of you for joining us so much. Thank you. So we last got to see you two with a feature film because we're family that showed at our, I believe, 2022 film festival. And I actually took first place at that festival. So it's wonderful to see you two working again uh, together. And we absolutely loved this film because of the massive buildup to one joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when, 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 you know there's there's certainly you know aspects of filmmaking where you know you set the scene you know there, there's the idea of you know b-roll to establish the setting and it feels like 99 percent of this film is b-roll for one joke which is a really unique take but it makes the joke hit really well. So give me the, the concept behind the structure of this film and why you chose to make it. Uh, it, was, it was actually mostly Christine's concept because, um, I mean, we're, we were lucky enough to uh, sort of write it to the location. So the location where it's filmed, it's literally all filmed on the same property. So Christine had had this idea beforehand of like um because she has this little cabin on her property and she's like wouldn't it be funny if there was just like a dude who was like instead of having to sleep on the couch had to sleep in the cabin and then we we sort of started developing this idea and then even christine's husband threw in who he also has a cameo at the end of the, the film like he threw in some ideas and we all sort of started brainstorming and then you know we just started drafting it out and then just like yeah, it, it did sort of become this, like, well, how many things could we fit in before this, like, big twist <laughs> at the end? Yeah, and there's such a trend with uh, movies that are set in the wilderness and one person or on a boat. Yeah, so yeah, I, I mean. So we went, we started with that concept, um, or that was sort of the idea of, of not making fun, but just almost, yeah, just... Uh, using those films uh, as a buildup as yeah. inspiration yeah we talked a lot about like castaway and the revenant and like how those films are like so influential and like the moments that happen in them and like even our poster design we like tried to like we we looked at those posters and then sort of like how do we make something that's for our film that's like similar or funny mm -hmm. um so it was a, that was a huge part of the inspiration I, I love that move because, uh, in, you know, there's plenty of films where they the entire premise is building up to be a twist. I mean, let's face it, Shyamalan's built his entire career on, on doing the, this kind of thing. But sometimes the that hits really well, sometimes this doesn't. To me, this hits so well because it's almost like you're testing the audience to see how far can we push this? How, how long can we do this? So I'm curious, like, how long was the initial cut? <laughs> uh, is the final where you're like how long can we do this just for one joke you know like, oh, it was, it was like we, yeah. oh sorry go ahead Christine. no you no go you go ahead go ahead, we, we specifically did also try to put like I, I mean i think you have to watch it maybe more than once or like there may be things in it where you're like this just like doesn't seem right like <laughs> what am i watching like and we did that on purpose like to be like because we want the audience to sort of be questioning it the whole way through and so like you know stuff like you know we very deliberately made uh, put things in the script like at one point he reaches into the candy dish and there's like valentine's candy in it it's like how how would that guy have that <laughs> like that makes no sense like we did that on purpose because we wanted to sort of see how far we could push that boundary of like when would you lose the disbelief that this guy's actually trying to survive mm -hmm. and like how much of that could, could we play with? And, you know, to be honest, I don't think it would have really worked at all without the actor that we have playing that role because Christine and I know him really well. He was in our other movie. Like we just know like what kind of an actor he is and like the thought of anybody else in that role. I feel like the whole entire short film would not work. Mm -hmm. um, but because 
he's so just grounded. I think that, that we were able to sort of really toe that line of like, what is believable and what isn't. Yeah, he committed to the, the script. I mean, 150%. Like he was, he was uh, in the wilderness and he was trying to survive. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And barefoot for multiple days in a row on yeah. actual wooded property. <laughs> the water was freezing. I, back to what, just quickly, like some of the things we did, which I don't, like some people would notice, most people wouldn't, but is like, he's wearing a pair of Valentino sneakers, <laughs> um, which, you know, it doesn't say Valentino, but someone might know. It's just those little, uh, if people are watching and they're like, huh. Hmm. So there, there are definitely little Easter eggs that I picked up on, on multiple watches. First time I, I was going through it and the entire time thinking, okay, is this like off the grid loner or is this like post-apocalyptic kind of survival? Like, or is this like the road or Mad Max in Oregon kind of vibe going on? And then uh, just the, the, the twist got me very well so kudos for that because that usually doesn't happen but it it got me really really, really well on, on on this one and I, I was gonna gonna ask about the acting because um there there's something to be said about comedy now i i know this this isn't like a slapstick comedy film but i always feel that like comedy works really well when the people involved are taking it seriously you, you know like um, take, for example, like I'm a huge fan of the Naked Gun films. And the reason why Leslie Nielsen is so great in those films is because he's total deadpan dragnet style, just the facts, ma'am, in these totally ridiculous scenarios. And the, the, the reverse of that, of what I think completely fails, are like those early to mid-2000s movie movies where there was like disaster movie and epic movie and all that, where the entire time basically the cast is winking at the camera like, yeah, you, you get the joke, you get the joke. <laughs> like that, that, that doesn't work in the setup and, and the premise. So when you're, when you're doing something that's intentionally to be funny, but you're taking it seriously, it works. If you're laughing along with it, it doesn't work. And this does a very good job of setting a very ominous, dystopian, depressing tone for 99% of the film. In doing that, is that difficult to film in terms of trying to establish that tone when everyone knows the script and knows the turn that this film is going to take? I actually don't think that was hard. Like, I think, I mean, to be fair, most of the same crew we had from Because We're Family also made this movie. Um, same cinematographer who we are all very close with at this point. Like, I think we all just had a language that that wasn't a, ever a question. Like, we just sort of dove in and did it. And even Josh, the actor, like, I think he knew that too. And like, I, I mean, we we were all committed. I actually think the hardest thing about filming it was trying not to get anything in the shot that was too revealing that it was like the yeah. property it was on. Like that yeah. actually felt like the hardest part about filming. It was like, what can we put in the frame that makes sense that we're not going to give too much away? Like, I think that was, I don't know, Christine, is there anything you would add to that about like, what was the hardest part? But like, I, I never felt like it, any anybody being committed to the joke was hard. No, I didn't think so at all. I, I think the the hardest part came in editing. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and and Alyssa did a fantastic job, and she does work closely with Eric, the, our uh, Macy, our our DP, and um, we. So it, and also we didn't even have time to think. It was so you know with filmmaking, you you're moving. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, that's true. We had two days to shoot it and and Eric and I we we were doing it in between jobs. So it was like we literally brought everyone to the same property. We all stayed on the property, mm -hmm. filmed it for two days. Christine and I slept on the couch together. <laughs> and then, like that was how we got it made. Like we just had if we were going to do it, we only had this small window of time to do it and we just did the whole thing. And, yeah, and some of the crew it's like cut lot we finally cut your uber's here 
Like, yeah. like Uber to the airport, like <laughs> legit. It was like go, that. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah. Especially oh. Jesse, like our, our hair and makeup person. She, she like had, yeah, it was a whole thing, but yeah, that was the definite experience I think was just trying to get it in the can. Yeah. And uh, the other part of filmmaking that um, people from the outside perspective usually don't think of is that when you've finished editing a film and it's in the can, as you say, that's really just the start of the process. If it's a film that you want to have any sort of notoriety, then it's actually getting the word out about it, doing initial screenings, trying to get on the festival circuit. So now that this film is finished and out in the world, what kind of reactions have you been getting from it? Well, Klamath will actually be our first festival that's ah, going to be done. Really? Um, we did screen it at a private event uh, before this, but it was kind of just a weird experience because it was a it was a concert, so like it was beforehand, and it was like in that period of time when people are sort of all conversing and blah 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 on the before. So it was just not uh, a setting where it was like um, easy to see reactions. So there was, it was, it was just a kind of mixed. Because it's feeling, a quiet but, film. So that's yeah. not, uh, yeah. yeah. That's true too, yeah. You have to be in a quiet space. Otherwise you're maybe would lose attention, you know, it's. Uh, it, yeah, because there's so no they, talking. Like there's barely any talking for the yeah. whole first. Right. Part of it. But so, the people that were paying attention, I, we got some. Yeah, good, they liked it. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. it was yeah. fun. It was definitely fun and worth it, it to do fun. it. But, um, yeah. but Klamath will be our first sure. actual festival uh, screening. I so mean, yeah, what? Even, uh, sorry, even hearing you say that you love the twist, like weren't expecting the twist at the end, is great because we really haven't shown it to too many people. So <laughs> that's great. So what got cut from the film? If you said that the initial cut was longer, trying to you know trying to. Uh, establish this world of either dystopian or out in the woods off, off off the grid. How many more miserable things did you put Josh through? <laughs> that, uh, you know, because that what, what I always think of is you know I, I, everyone's seen the Lord of the Rings films, and if you're a movie fan, you've probably watched the 45 hours of behind the scenes on the extended cuts and whatnot. And the actors who played hobbits complain endlessly and talk about how they kept track of the days when they had to go through the hobbit foot makeup and the feet were never actually shown on camera. Like you made me do all this crap, wake up at 3 a.m. and you never oh, see no, my feet. I feel like I need to call Josh and be like, how I know. mad are you? <laughs> I know. How mad are jump, you? Jump out <laughs> of the freezing cold pond. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what things did you put him through? And like, you know what? We really don't need this in order to make the joke work. I actually feel like we tried to keep it as minimal as we could, but we did put him in the pond a couple of times. But to be fair, I also bit the bullet. We went back and did B-roll and I jumped in the pond. So like the actual splash that happens when he jumps in is me. <laughs> in the pond, which you can't tell. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, he did go in the pond. He did. It, it was, I think probably the night work was like the hardest because it was just like, I mean, not warm and it was uncomfortable and like the, the costumes were not comfortable. Um, and again, then once he, like in the script, he like loses his shoes. So like, then once that happens, he's like barefoot. So I think it was, that was probably the hardest part was like a, just having to be barefoot and then walking around and the water like which there's also snapping turtles in that pond so yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a small ask yeah. keeping him keeping him warm keeping yeah. Josh warm yeah and um i i don't think we cut a lot we there was a lot of foraging i think i definitely think that's the was the most difficult part for me and for us is 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 we're watching it over and over again. So you kind of lose perspective on, is this too long? Is, is it too short? Like the pacing, it's really tricky when you've seen it over and over again. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you have to watch it. Like you've seen it for the first time, every, you know, every cut. And that's hard. That, yeah. that is hard. I think, um, I think what we mostly cut was like, we cut like how long certain things were like we cut 
sections based on how long they were. We didn't cut like any major plot points. It was more based on like, how long is this taking? How long is this taking? And then like, what, at what point, like, would it become unbelievable? And we actually, I mean, we worked on the edit so much. And then we even like right before the concert screening recut more out of it. Um, because we were like, eh, this just isn't right. So like the version it is today is definitely a shortened version from everything else, but there's nothing major I would say we took out. Okay. Pacing on this is definitely important because uh, there's certainly films where so much of the film is establishing the scene and, and the setting. I, I can think of a lot of uh, Kelly Reichert's films are, are kind of that, that way of yeah. a lot of time spent in just showing you the environment that they're in just to establish what, what these characters are, are going through and something uh, like that can sometimes work and sometimes it can really backfire. You know, you can really bore an audience at a certain point where it's like, yeah, we get it. There's a lot of rolling hills or it's, it's for, <laughs> we, we understand can we get to the plot. Um, but for this, it builds up the anticipation for, for the, the cell. So I, I, I really like the pacing of it because it does feel really kind of slow and establishing and just kind of getting to know the experiences of what this person is going through. You keep waiting. Okay. Eventually we're going to get to a plot and realize <laughs> you're really, this is almost a plotless film in, in, in a way, which is, which is an, an, an interesting take on filmmaking. So yeah. I, um, is there any aspect of this film that we have not discussed that you think is, is really important that you'd like to share with our audience? Well, I not necessarily. I'm just thrilled that this is Alyssa's debut as a director, and I'm completely as a as a friend. Also, she 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 killed it, and I'm I'm just I hope everyone enjoys it because she's awesome. And I just have to throw that out. <laughs> no, no, it was super fun to make. I think that like you know overall like like I said, a lot of the team that made this movie was the same as our last movie, which I am sure will be as the same as our next movie, because we've sort of developed this like little group of people that we feel very comfortable working with and that feel like we can all make something together. And so I think that to me is like a precious gift that I, I would never give up. Like this is, mm -hmm. it's been an incredible journey over the last few years of like, working with these people and and the commitment that the the crew had they come down one weekend we filmed the whole thing like it was quite literally like christine said we're like putting people in an uber right after we call cut <laughs> multiple people that have been with we had to send someone it was unrelated they were like in a car accident the night before they came down so then had to go to the urgent care after we finished filming the first day but then they still like were there and like it just the amount of support I feel in making this movie has been incredible and I wouldn't trade it for the world. And I'm so excited to keep doing other things in the future. Well, thank you both of you so much for making this wonderful film. It made me laugh and I hope it makes our audience laugh as well. When this film screens at the 12th annual Klamath independent film festival on Sunday, September 29th in our scares and laughs block starting at 5 15 PM. And of course it can also be caught here on eventive for two weeks surrounding the festival. Alyssa, Christine, thank you so much for, for the film. And we look forward to seeing future projects from both of you as well. Awesome. Thank you so much.